the history of the old Alcazar through the years, and um, hopefully share with us some plans for the future. Okay. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to thank the Historical Society um, for the, allowing me access to the history and the pictures which have allowed me to make this presentation and uh, to gain so much knowledge about uh, the Alcazar Theater, where we as uh, the Plaza Theater are located now. And it really is a jewel of our town, one of the jewels of our town. The original proprietor, uh, proprietor of the Alcazar Theater was Oliver Prickett, and he had a long career in the entertainment industry. Um, Prickett was his birth name, but he went by his given name, Oliver Blake. Uh, from the mid-1920s and onward, he was a picture at the Pasadena Playhouse, uh, where his brother was managing director, and his sister, Maddy, was uh, a resident character actress. He started productions and taught classes to first-year students. He originally came to Carpenter in the late 20s to stay with his friend Jim Diedrich while he was recuperating mm -hmm. from a bout uh, of malaria. And, but he brought with him, along with, along with malaria, his <laughs> love of the theater and arts and his flair for promotion. He entered films in 1941, and for his first years, uh, the camera, he had bit parts. Uh, and one of the most famous bit parts is um, as Blue Parrot, the waiter in Casablanca. I have some pictures up here you can see. Come and take a look afterwards. It shows the theater and him and some of the movies that he was in. Um, but, and then one of more, his more visible screens was as the dour-faced Indian neighbor Universal's monopod kettles. I'm a real classic lover, so I've seen those movies, and maybe some of you have seen them too. Yeah. Hana. Um, Hana. He was. I think he was called Chief Crowbar. Chief Crowbar. Yeah, on the Mom Pa kettle. I have so. actually Geoduck. Oh no, Crow. Yeah. I, maybe he was both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, a year before the Alcazar was built, he announced to Carpenter. Uh, people who really were not sure that they, this would really go, that he intended to show motion pictures in the men's club room which I'm not really sure was where that was located. I never found the location for that. Uh, but it went so well, and so many people attended that they started doing two programs a night. Um, but he was not satisfied with that because it had a flat floor and uh, hard seats distracted from the enjoyment of the films. But uh, the men's club, they weren't interested in doing all the structures to change that or to lift up the floor. So um, he felt the events was so great that Carpenter would be able to actually support a real theater. And unfortunately, he had heard of two gentlemen uh, who felt the same way from Santa Barbara, Henry Mueller and Frank Dow. And they had been planning a business block in Carpenteria to contain several shops, offices, and a theater. He told them of his idea, and they loved it, Phil McGrath plans. And work began right away. It didn't take very long. In less than a year, Carpenteria's approval of the motion picture policy resulted in the first class playhouse that would be a showcase for city many times the size of Carpenteria. Um, before uh, this actually happened, he, when he was showing uh, the films, the films were actually on the Hickey property uh, on Linden Avenue. And you can see over there, there's the tent. Uh, where he uh, showed all those films where he ended up doing it twice a night. The Alcazar opened on April 27th, 1928, and they had invested $500,000 to build the theater. Um, it was claimed, the building was claimed as strong and sturdy as the Rock of Gibraltar, which was good words to most people at that time because it hadn't been that long since they had the big earthquake in Santa Barbara. Um, there was a very large and enthusiastic audience attended the opening. Uh, the doors were open, the crowd was waiting, uh, they did the 50-50 cent girl, and uh, the cameras began to roll inside, and
and they had already done filming of the outside, so they actually, the next two nights, showed a film of the opening. It was filled to capacity. In fact, the sold out sign was put on the door uh, in the afternoon. <laughs> so they had to turn people away. He received so many flowers from supportive friends that uh, it was a problem finding places for him so people could actually walk through them to get into the theater. Uh, he received many uh, letters of congratulations from MGM, MGM and uh, Warner Brothers Seattle so a lot of support support for down in Hollywood. Uh, and, and during the film, the audience was invited afterwards to go upstairs to the El Camino Ballroom that resided on the second floor at that time that was built. And they had a full orchestra dancing in Toledo at night, being filled with dancers while the orchestra played home street home. <laughs> Music was very important uh, in the silent era. Uh, as it contributed to the audience's appreciation of the film, it acted as an interpreter uh, as it brought out and emphasized each new emotion that was depicted in the screen. So we always remember the da na na na. So realizing how important that was to the Alcazar, uh, Oliver actually selected an organ of that day called uh, Robert Morton, which was considered one of the best organs of that time. Uh, there were times when talking films came out and uh, he would have a little bit of trouble keeping up with the films and getting the equipment to do so. So at that time, he brought in some stage shows as a gentleman, Mario Donato, who was a famous magician at the time, and the Gum Sisters, who came all the way from Lancaster to sing for $15 a night. And one of those girls later became known as Judy Garland. She's worth a lot more than $15 a night. <laughs> he moved to Pasadena with a new bride in 1930, but his legacy continued because um, the theater continued to receive uh, first-run movies thanks to his Hollywood connection. He died in February of 1992 at his home in Pasadena, and his ashes are resting in the family plot at Carpenter Cemetery. Oh. And, uh, Whenever he asked what was the best times of his life or acting, he always said it was the time he spent carbon grant. Years, uh, decades, actually, chipped away at the theater. And by 1970, it was managed by a uh, lady named as Mrs. Dickey. And I know some of you remember Mrs. Dickey. She made sure that everybody behaved, and if you were a boy or girl, that you were sitting apart from each other and no lips were touching. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, I have a couple, like on these, on the from the scene, they're kind of fun to see. Um, people's, there was a lecture dowling, it was five when it opened, and he remembers the Saturday matinees were a big event of the week. He saw Hopalong, Cassidy, Tom Mix, Tarzan, Flash Gordon. Bonnie Milne, class of 42, remembered Mickey Mouse and Flash Gordon and Popeye and his girlfriend, Olive. Uh, Roberta Rollins, her mother was a teenage usher when Oliver Pritchett, uh, Pritchett ran the theater. And she had a diary that she kept during that time, which most of the diary articles were about the people in the movie rather than what was going on in her life. <laughs> But she does remember, or Roberta remembers seeing Gone Wind when it was first released in 1939. Uh, and then there was uh, uh, Dave Wyckoff. His memory was to see Bambi. And it started with a Charlie Chaplin silent movie. And uh, he remembered during that time, the manager would have to stop the movie and occasionally turn the lights because the audience would be screaming so much you couldn't hear the movie. <laughs> In the 40s and 50s, uh, the name became the Del Mar. And uh, actually, I just remember something about the 60s. I actually attended the trade once in the 60s. And I had my first date, I think I was 12, with Gary Peterson. It was Lawrence <laughs> Peterson family. <down. laughs> and uh, we walked from our Wolverine. He came pick me up. We walked all the way to the theater. And it was Vincent Price, oh, Vincent the Pendulum. Right. And I remember, oh, it's the most scary. I still remember that Iron Maiden, the goo goo. But um, I didn't see a lot of movies because half of it I was waiting for him to take my hand and hold it, and the other hand was, how do I get this sweaty hand cramped away? But, you know, 
We had a wonderful time. A lot, lot of good memories there. It smelled a little bit like my saw and, uh, and uh, you know, it was good times. Uh, so anyway, then we came to Del Mar, and um, they, that was the time too, I guess, uh, in the 40s and 50s, where they had had um, uh, the shoot-em-ups where they did the serials. So you would go and you'd watch the movies, you'd be having a wonderful time, and just when it got to the climax, it continued next week. <laughs> so that, they had one way of bringing back the audience. You know, kind of like days of our time and our children, things we've watched on shows growing up. George show remembers how the younger kids, during the Western, they would gallop down the front row, free for parents' warning about not hurting your eye, and they would pull the cap guns from their holsters and they would shoot <laughs> at the cowboys on the springs. So, uh, he does remember, though, that Hopalong Cassidy fired at least 10 rounds from his six shooter gun. <laughs> so that without reloading. So that, that was pretty tremendous. Um, other uh, people remember having crossed the highway uh, to get to the theater, to that side. Uh, Rebecca Clemens Sanchez remembered crying up, the crying upstairs because they used to have a, a, a crying room upstairs for parents with little kids so that, that you wouldn't interfere <laughs> with the movies. I remember in L.A. sitting behind those as a kid. But, uh, and then they also uh, had the, new reel, the newsreels during the war. And um, when, uh, there was one, uh, Robert Rollins, remember seeing the horror um, of the U.S. invasion of Germany in 1945 and the uncovering of uh, boxcars at the death camps, which vision never left. So it also brought a reality uh, to people in those days and um, of, of what we were going through. Um, and then it also brought tears to the uh, young uh, Anne Kaisinga who watched uh, The Wizard of Oz and couldn't stop crying because she thought Dorothy was never going to get home. <laughs> you know, uh, and they also bought the horror movies, uh, such as It Came from Outer Space <laughs> and The Blob. That was a good one. Uh, let's see here. Sorry. Roxy Grant Lapidus recalls that when her husband saw Psycho, 19, in the most, there was a group behind him in the very back seat, sitting all along the road, and they were all. Uh, they all had their drinks in brown bags. Why? I don't know. <laughs> they were in brown bags. And just when the climax was coming, the whole seat fell backwards. And there was it was full of the floor with guys and you know, <laughs> that's right in the history books, right? In here. <laughs> uh, and then I'm sorry, to go back to to the um, in the oh, by nineteen eighty three. Uh, and, and, and at that time, the, uh, it really had come into a little bit of disarray and stuff, but uh, a Chuck and Pat Wheeler signed a five-year lease, uh, and, and uh, that was when it was, it, was, it was called the Plaza Theater at that time. And it became a real neighborhood favorite because they were so family-oriented and they showed a lot of family movies, and they would even, if kid parents didn't come on time, or if they would drive the kids home. So you don't see that today. Uh, and they had planned to modernize the theater uh, and upgrade it, but he had his ailing health problems, and uh, they, they were not able to renew the lease. So uh, they decided to retire. Uh, he ran everything, from the tickets to the projector to everything. And uh, they can remember at one time, I don't know if all you remember our resident actor, uh, Alex Rocco, would go to see the theaters, and he would run upstairs when the projector was off saying, can I help? <laughs> <laughs> Those are fond memories for him. In 1993, and you'll have to excuse me if I'm pronouncing this name right, Zahi uh, Zadik, he rescued the theater. He was a real store, a real store in town, and he bought the theater hoping that he would have other people manage it, but he actually ended up managing the theater by his, he really did everything and stuff. Tickets, washing, everything. Um, and at one time they were going, they were using it as a um, live playhouse. There was to be a um, live talk show, Carpenter Live, 
then Mark Kane is to host, and the show is going to be hosted on KCTV Channel 19. Uh, on November 29th, 2001, uh, the Plaza Theater uh, closed escrow. The property had been on the market for 544 days and was sold for $200,000 below the asking price of $1,750,000. The owners of that building are now um, Elizabeth and Bill Wood. Um, he has passed away and she's in a nursing home, but their son, uh, and they still are owners of that building. They had wanted to see the building as a mixed-use development with the store fronts and then to have the residents up on top. They signed the lease contract with it, called them, and together they renovated the whole theater. And uh, we've got new seats, new lobby, uh, ADA compliance and that type of thing. And Metropolitan opened up the theater, but they found that they couldn't make enough in the community uh, to be able to exist there. Partly because when you rent a movie, a movie theater like that, have to show it at least so many days in a row. And I guess we didn't have enough of us going three or four times to see it, so um, I think we couldn't support it. So at the time, they had been out for a while, and they were looking for somebody to lease it. And that was when they approached um, the little, our little, we were seaside theater at the time, Park Great Community Theater, and got a hold of Osa Olsen. And, uh, which had been actually for many years, Os and I had been on the community board for many, many years, and our dream was always, oh, we could only be in the plaza. <laughs> you know, so that was like, maybe we can do this, but maybe we can do it alone. So we also heard that Carpe Vance, and that was Michael Zaro, that was something that they had always wanted to do too. So we got together, and Mike and Osa actually negotiated with Metropolitan Theaters, and we got our lease. Uh, we got our lease on the plant, on the uh, theater, which was a huge dream come true. So we got together and we got a new board, and we then became DBA, Plaza Playhouse Theater. And this is our mission statement. It is the mission of Plaza Playhouse Theater to be a venue that is the center of performing arts and entertainment for the entire community, Valley community. A place where young and old can express their artistic talent, music, dance, theater, and also enjoy the wild world entertainment has to offer. <laughs> we endeavor to be a place that Carpenter can be proud of. We started to schedule concerts, films, live theater, broadness and children's programs, and uh, and we're still going. <laughs> and, and that's due to the community support. We, we appreciate that. Our first uh, concert was December 10th, 2010, time goes fast, with the duo of the bands, and it featured our own locals, uh, Rincons and Brewery Boys. <coughs> so since conception, uh, we've done all kind of improvements ourselves. We have a big screen, a new film projector that doesn't go out when you're watching the film, <laughs> so. new theater lights, uh, curtains, sound system, uh, and we've done this to hopefully to bring the community off the full performance and experience. And we continue to upgrade our venue. We will be celebrating our 90th anniversary at the exact date of the conception of the theater on April 27, uh, 1928, with a showing um, of, is this wax? House of wax? No, 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 Casa Blanca. Oh, that's for Casa Blanca oh, again. In April. We're going to be doing Casa Blanca again. And we chose this film to honor uh, Oliver Pick Cricket, and as you can see, he had a small part in that movie. And these were all attended by his daughter, Jane Luther, and his grandson, Andre. And he wears the fez that he wore in the movie every time he comes mm -hmm. uh, to celebrate with us. So you can always see him in his fez. Um, uh, and sadly enough, actually, um, Jane Luther passed away this year. But he will still be attending our class of Blanca. We recently talked and voted to return to the name of the Alcazar, um, to join the other historical theaters in Santa Barbara, Granada, and uh, Riviera, Arlington, El Grau, some of the first theaters in these areas. And films, concerts, 
We have a theater season and community-based projects will continue to be the heart of our theater. Our board is an all-volunteer working board. And when I say working, it's like, it's like your board. You're all working <laughs> uh, yeah, to keep the theater open. We are also fortunate, as you are, to have some incredibly amazing volunteers from the community. Um, and we're always looking for people to join our dream. We also have some part of some very nice 501k uh, okay, organizations in town. We appreciate it all. Here's House of Black, which I saw the second running of that one. House of Black will be shown uh, this October 28th uh, before Halloween in celebration of Halloween. Uh, and this features Oliver Frickett also. So uh, that night, we are going to be rolling out our capital campaign uh, as the showing of House of Wax. So if you would like to go back in time and get a little scared and watch a little horror flick and then surprise, it was right at it, um, please join us for this movie. I think it'll be a fun night. Um, and with our capital campaign, we hope to continue to refurbish our theater with up-to-date equipment and some facility additions for the benefit of both our performers and our audiences. And thank you so much for uh, having me come. I see a lot of really familiar faces, and it's, uh, it's wonderful to see. Thank you. It's not my turn. Where's Dorothy? Where's our president? My president. You have to adjourn the meeting. Adjourn the meeting. Don't leave him here for me to clean. Okay. And thank you all for coming. It was wonderful. Beautiful day. I understand it's going to get really hot next week. Oh. In the mountains and above. I'm originally from Minnesota. I prefer that. <laughs> Thank you for coming and you need to turn. Thank you. and they love